Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now as you can see, I've been joined by a pair of shoes here on the table which gives an idea of where we're going with this conversation today. And it's a Q&A written in by viewers who've asked me questions about footwear in general. So this is a, a, an area of one's style which I'm always happy to talk about because I think good quality footwear time and time again will pay us back over the long run and a lot of people have fallen out of the knowledge and the habit of maintaining shoes, buying good quality shoes, where to go for shoes uh, over these last few years because we've slipped towards this world of comfort and casual when it comes to footwear but it simply doesn't cut the mustard when you want to turn up your style volume and certainly enter a situation as an intentionally well-dressed man. So I've got some questions today. I have to be honest, I haven't really uh, done any research here, so this is kind of off-the-cuff responses. And my first question comes from Dobrosav. I hope I've said that right. And he says, hello, Ash. I have a question about shoe trees. I have some new Derby boots and I was wondering if I need boot trees or if regular shoe trees are sufficient. This is my first time buying them. So I didn't want to make unnecessary mistakes and purchases. Your expertise will be greatly appreciated. Okay, so you bought a pair of boots dress boots of some kind, maybe chucker boots, whatever you've got. And you're thinking to yourself, I hear people telling me I need to have shoe trees. Do I need to have something special for my boots or my, you know, these dress boots that I've just bought? Now, if I turn to my little Grenson shoes here, these are the sort of things I would recommend. Now, the first thing I have to say to you is, no, I don't think you need to have special boot trees at all, because the actual, the only additional part of support you're gonna get is maybe for the, you know, the elevated area of the shoe. It's not necessary. It's the foot area where we're seeking to maintain the integrity, the shape, and this is where the shoe tree comes into its own. A quick reminder, what do we need in a shoe tree? We want the shoe tree ideally to be made of, um, I'm gonna say cedar, but you often find them in beech. The reason why cedar is preferable, it's quite a porous wood, um, and it's quite, has a rather pleasant, uh, rather pleasant uh, odor to it as well. Um, and the reason why we want that is because obviously uh, that's going to leach away any moisture which is, which is inside the shoe. So if we've worn the shoe all day, as soon as we come home, take them off, we want to put our shoe tree in. We want to make sure the shoe tree is a good fit. You buy them in specific sizes. I'm a size eight. This is a size eight shoe tree. As you can see, it articulates to allow it to be easily fitted into the shoe. We slide it in. We make sure it's a good fit and our shoe tree does two things. Firstly, it is maintaining the shape and the integrity of my shoe in its natural form. So the shoe isn't having excessive creasing or anything like that. As it dries, the leather, if it was wet, may contract and it may cause the creasing to exasperate. But by the shoe tree being in there, it's maintaining that shape. The other thing it does, and as I've already said, it leaches out moisture. So even uh, if you don't suffer with particularly sweaty feet, your feet are going to lose moisture. It's going to transfer into the leather of the shoe throughout the day. And by putting a shoe tree in there, it draws that moisture out and keeps the shoe fresh and in its best possible condition. Because if you allow that moisture to dry naturally, it might affect the leather, as I say, cause it to contract or bacteria in your perspiration would certainly gather in the shoe and it would cause the shoe to smell right? unpleasant odors over a period of time. So something like cedar, beech, perfect shoe tree, no need to spend extra money on any boot shoe trees. And I never pay more than 20, 25 pounds for a pair of shoe trees. And I make it a bit of a practice. If I buy a new pair of shoes or I get a new pair of shoes, uh, I don't normally buy new ones. I buy them from eBay normally because you know, you don't have to pay full price for shoes. There's so many out there in the market already, which are pre-owned. You can get so, so many bargains, but when I get a new pair of shoes, I also factor in the purchase of a new pair of shoe trees. So the shoes and the shoe trees go through their life with me together, both matching. So I know there's always one pair of trees per shoes, no problem. That's the way to do it. Okay, next question comes from BNB. 
I hope I've got that right. Hi Ash, I need your suggestion. I'm deciding between pebble or country game net grain leather and smooth calfskin leather chukka boots. Which is the more appropriate for casual and everyday wear? Okay, that's a really good question. Because if you go on to uh, a website, and I'll use one of my favorite shoe brands as an example, say Chini for instance. Now they do a, uh, a chukka boot style, which is called the Jackie 3. It's a really lovely chukka boot style, ideally suited for all different walks of life. But they make that shoe, that boot, in several different finishes, different types of leather. You've got suede, you've got leather, different colours and so on. Now they do this sort of country grain leather in a brown, which is that pebble grain. Right? They also do it in a calfskin leather, so it's exactly what you're talking about in your scenario. Which one would you go for if you were looking solely for casual and everyday wear? Now for me, without doubt, the decision would be the pebble grain leather for a couple of reasons. Firstly, over a longer period of time, pebble grain leather tends to have the longest or the best wear. Right? It, it, the patina is less affected. It has the, it, it seems to be a little more rugged and it's definitely something you can wear without spending quite so much time on maintenance. And when I say maintenance, I mean polishing, cleaning and so on. Because that pebble grain leather tends to break up the finish of the leather, so it tends to look better between polishes. Now if you went for the calfskin leather, which is by far the more shiny, the more beautiful, it requires more maintenance and patina, as in when you apply polished products to it over a longer period of time, the appearance of the shoe will change. The patina will darken, it will go on a journey. Many people love patina because it shows the shoe is on a life journey. Other people don't like it, they like the shoe to remain as close to the factory finish as possible. But if you've got a smooth leather, it's going to show the patina more and it's going to show a the dirt, the grime and so on more obviously. Whereas the pebble grain is going to be less, um, it's going to show up the dirt more, uh, less rather, and it's going to go longer between polishes, if that's something of importance to you. Now the upside of the smooth leather is that it's smarter. You can wear it with chinos, <clears throat> you can put a polish on it, even get a mirror shine on it. So if you're going to special events and you're gonna use that as a, a shoe that you can step up into those events, the smooth leather is going to be your choice. For me though, <clears throat> the scenario you describe, casual, I would say pebble grain. I own a pair of pebble grain leather uh, checker boots myself and they are one of my most worn shoes because of their versatility. So pebble grain, maybe the way to go. Okay, now my next question <coughs> comes to, talks about the purchasing of shoes, and this is from Karate Kid Russ, who says, I'm looking at upgrading my work shoes. I have previously bought Samuel Windsor, and I haven't been totally happy with the quality, despite them having Goodyear welts. I would struggle to afford prices from the companies the higher end companies, you know, Crockett and Jones, Cheney and so on. Do you have any experience of Charles Turret shoes? They are on sale for about 150 British pounds. Okay, so good question. Um, Samuel Windsor, for a start, I will address that. They are a lower priced, lower quality shoe manufacturer. Um, their history is goes back many years, but I think the company as they are today bears no reflection to the historical Samuel Windsor, who were a Northamptonshire based company who made good quality shoes in the past. These days, they make foreign manufactured shoes of lower quality components to a price point. So if you're really looking to buy a brand new shoe at a low price point, um, Samuel Windsor might be a route that you take. They do purport to have Goodyear welted shoes. Goodyear welting is the mechanism by which the upper is attached to the sole, and Goodyear welting is universally considered to be the better quality of shoe manufacture. So when you say Goodyear welting, your first thought is, this is a good pair of shoes. That isn't the case. Obviously you have bad and good in all walks of life. Don't just see Goodyear welting and think you're getting good quality shoes. You've made a point of talking about Charles Turret. Now Charles Turret made their name 
over some 30, 40 years now, I believe, uh, initially making shirts. And then they went on a journey as a manufacturer. They've now just recently opened a shop near me, actually, in Bristol. And uh, they now sell pretty much everything in the menswear space. You can buy suits, shoes, everything in between. And they uh, promote their shoes as being British made um, and you know at a, at a fairly approachable price point. It's important to know that Charles Turret do not have a factory which make their own shoes. All right? They buy shoes from existing shoe companies and they will badge them as their own product. And this is a common thing in the style world you will find companies which will buy in shoes uh, and put their own name on them and then sell them in their line as a pair of shoes. They don't promote them as shoes from Chini or Sanders or whatever. They will sell them as their own shoe, Charles Turret. Charles Turret traditionally used to have all their shoes made by a quite well-regarded shoe company called Loke here in the UK. Uh, I believe in the modern era they have their shoes made by Loke still, Barker, Sanders and Chini. So I guess what they do is they will commission these larger Northamptonshire based companies to produce a run of shoes for them in a certain style. They'll stick the old Charles to it, label on them and sell them on as their own product. Um, they may even, at this point, because I don't know, it's impossible to find out, obviously, they may even be uh, buying in shoes from abroad and doing that same process. So you cannot be sure of the, uh, the sort of the origins of the shoes that you're buying if you're buying in Charles Turret, just by looking at a Charles Turret name on them. So you may be getting a really good shoe for £150, you may not. It's worth just being aware and asking a few questions. Um, I'm sure the sales assistants will have no idea of the origins of the shoes, but have a look at them based on what you understand about quality, manufacturer, make a decision. My advice to you though, if you, as you say, you are of limited budget and you're in the market to buy a pair of shoes for £150, I'm absolutely saying to you, if you're UK based, you maybe want to consider going to Northamptonshire yourself if you're passing through on a way or even make a special journey and go to the shoe uh, factory outlets of the companies up there. I've been on that journey myself this year. For £150, you can get quite a lot of shoe. Brand new, you know, slight factory seconds or whatever. If you can't make that journey or you're not UK based, £150 will buy you a fantastic pair of shoes from eBay, pre-owned. You could be looking at Chini, Saunders, uh, any of the big brands, Barker. You know, you could really get a fantastic shoe for 100 quid, let alone 150. So just be thoughtful about how you're spending your money to achieve the shoes that you want to enter into your collection. You don't have to buy brand new. And if you're going to a company like Charles Tirrett, you are playing a bit of Russian roulette in the quality of shoe that you get because they're not making the shoes. Somebody's making them for them and they're rebadging them. So you are really throwing the dice. So have a think about it, but don't just think I have to buy brand new. So my next question comes from Frank V 7068 who says, how do you store your quality shoe collection? Do you keep them in their dust bags or keep them out on display? I seem to wear my shoes less when I don't visually look at them, but I worry if my shoes will be damaged outside of the dust bag. Okay. Really good question, because you're absolutely right. You know, if you leave your shoes out in the open room, they are gonna get dust landing on them. Of course they are, so you're gonna to have to wipe them over if you don't wear them every day. Also, make sure you don't store them in direct sunlight, because that big, that fiery ball in the sky, which emits ultraviolet rays, it's going to leach the color from the leather in your shoes. So if you, you know, if the sun comes into the window in your bedroom, wherever you store your shoes, and it's hitting your shoes where they're being stored, you know, be careful. They could lose color over time. And even worse, if only one of the shoes gets hit by the sunlight, you'll have a differential in the color. What I do, I store my shoes in the, on shoe racks at the bottom of my wardrobe, all right? So simply in the bottom of the wardrobe. Most important thing, make sure they've got the old shoe trees in them, of course. But my shoes in circulation, I store them 
bottom of the wardrobe. They're to hand, I can see them, I can choose them based on the clothing I'm wearing each day. Now, I've got two seasons really of my year. I've got my warm weather shoes and my cold weather shoes. Warm weather, leather soles, tend to be a bit more decorative, tend to be shoes. My winter footwear collection tends to be dress boots, chucker boots, and they tend to have rubber or day-night soles, right? Because it's more proportionate to the weather which I encounter here in my temperate climate, United Kingdom. So, um, the shoes which I'm out of season, so my winter shoes for instance, at this moment in time, they're all up in shoe boxes which I've bought from IKEA, which have a mesh front to them. It allows the footwear inside that shoe box to breathe. It allows air to get in there so they don't get, you know, if I put them away slightly damp or soggy, it's not going to rot, it's not going to deteriorate. It's got airflow. It's protected from ultraviolet and is put away nice and safe with a shoe tree in them so that they maintain their shape and integrity. Now I buy my shoe boxes from IKEA. They sell them, you know, these um, shoe boxes which has got a little mesh front to them which is affixed in place with a bit of Velcro. They are perfect. They even fold flat uh, if you want to fold them away. So basically what happens in about so end of September, October every year, my winter boots come down and they get replaced by my summer shoes. So we have a little bit of a swap over, so I'm ready for those both different environmental situations I face each year. I think the shoe boxes I bought from Ikea, they weren't expensive at all. I don't know, 20 quid was enough to furnish me with enough boxes that I need for my shoe collection. So that's what I do. Might be a good way to go. So you've got the ones you're using to hand and the ones which you're not going to wear very often because of they're suited to different environmental situations. They're packed away nice and safe and tidy. Okay, my final question today comes from Arcady, who asks the question, I'm interested in your opinion on sandals. Would you consider them as elegant sartorial footwear, or do you prefer loafers and espadrilles in the summer? Would you wear them with socks? Okay, good question. I do own a pair of sandals, but I've ha- I got to be honest, I have not worn them for many years, because I've kind of steered away from the sandal as a piece of footwear in my collection. Um, I understand, you know, many people will wear them. They're functional footwear in the hot time of year where you perhaps want to give your foot some air and you're happy to, you know, wear a pair of shoes which are aesthetically not beautiful. Because let's be honest, sandals are not pretty at all. You can't describe them as sartorial, but they are well suited to certain times of the year. The middle ground, I would suggest, which people may want to look at if you want to be an intentionally well-dressed man, yet, you know, you want to also let some air get to your foot. Maybe you live in the Mediterranean or a very subtropical climate. The alternative to a sandal is the ventilated shoe. Now, this is quite a stylish, elegant shoe, which has a number of small aeration holes in it, which allows the foot to have many of the benefits of a sandal, yet still maintaining the sartorial elegance of a quality shoe in your daily attire. That would be my suggestion for the middle ground that I would go down, rather than the sandal, which whilst functional, I would describe as not beautiful. So there we go, folks. I hope um, some of those questions might have been of use to you and maybe, uh, you know, influenced your thoughts on footwear as well. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, click the red button and subscribe. If you'd like to pass a comment on anything sartorial, style or lifestyle related, drop it into the comment section below or send me an email. I'll put my email address up on the screen here send it in to me. Um, If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee or become a patron. I do extra videos for my patrons and I answer their questions on a personal level over on my patron channel. And all of the comments you will find, uh, or or the, 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 uh, the links to those routes are in the show notes below. So, until the next time, take care and I'll see you again very soon.